I'm Scott Patrick in the new studio. What's the best one hit wonder, the best sports jam, or the best song about sex? Access TV is here to settle all of your barroom bets with their series, The Top 10 Revealed. The Top 10 Revealed has new episodes on Sunday nights only on Access TV. That's Channel 167 on Dish. I recently sat down with Top 10 host Katie Darrell to talk about lists and music and Access TV. Welcome to the Top 10 Revealed. I'm Katie Darrell. Today, it's all about the most epic songs of 1973. Remember, your votes make our list, so log on to chime in. Katie, great to have you on Dish. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations on this series. It's one of those you go, oh man, I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> I didn't. No, no. You did, and Access did. How did the idea come about? Uh, gosh, that's a great question. So I had been doing a show prior to this um, called The World's Greatest Tribute Bands, where we would, you know, showcase all these great bands that, you know, pay tribute to the classics. Um, and when the network decided that it was time to pivot and try something new, Mark Cuban said, what ideas do you have? <laughs> oh, like, you love getting that that's email? That's cool when Mark Cuban goes, what ideas do you have, Yeah, right? you yeah. love that e email, but then you're like, oh, no. Oh. He basically, <laughs> all you start hearing is tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I huh. basically got, you know, four emails worth of tries to get something in that he's gonna love um, before he goes, mm, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. And just looking at the focus of the network and knowing that pretty much classic rock rules that how could we do something different with classic rock? I mean, I, I love watching a Fleetwood Mac concert, but how could I watch it with different eyes and mm -hmm. ears? And the old fashioned countdown format kind of came to mind. And here we are with, gosh, like a handful of fantastic episodes, you know, about ready to roll out. We know 1973 was filled with amazing songs, but only 10 will make the cut. So if your favorite track didn't make it, I'm afraid you're just gonna have to. So live and live die. Kicking off our list at number 10 is a rather appropriate tune for this 1973 flashback episode. In the choice of the 70s, I mean, you weren't even born in the 70s, <laughs> 80s, 90s, I mean, you're... I mean, barely the 90s, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dolly. But for somebody like me, who was, those are great shows to go back and watch. Mm -hmm. and, and with the new set of eyes and ears, in the sense that the songs may have meant something to me as a little kid, and then all of a sudden you've got a show that, let's talk about songs about S.E. X. And I go, I never knew Cherry Pie maybe about, I didn't even know what S.E.X., you know, yeah, yeah. first time around and now coming back going, oh, that's cool. And also brings new memories, yeah. so. Well, in my defense, first off, Your <laughs> Honor, um, I did start out in classic rock as a DJ. So um, although I, I am on the younger side, thanks so much, um, I, I do have a passion for classic rock music. Not only did my parents play in the home, but then I had that work experience. Um, but with these songs, yeah, you, you start to relearn the meaning of these songs and just the bands. Um, one of the things I love about this show is not only are you listening to tunes that are catchy and are gonna be stuck in your head all day mm -hmm. long, but I always hope that you're getting a piece of water cooler information that right. you can chit chat about and be able to have a fun fact, whether it is about, did you know this song was about sex, even though there's innuendo in here, um, or just, um, just an interesting tidbit about one of the artists or where mm -hmm. they are now. I just like giving information in learning. Right, and also it shows you like uh, the top 10, for instance, of 1973, you mm -hmm. go back and go, oh my God, these are the biggest acts of all time in some yeah. cases. Yeah, I mean, really, when you start breaking music down by year and genre and artist, you start realizing, first off, th there's too many. So this list right. is never going to satisfy just one person. Everyone's right. gonna be pissed off at some point or another because you you forgot such and such song. Right. Even though it was a B-side, how did you not know it was my favorite? <laughs> Hi, I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. And you're like, oh my gosh. Like, um, But yeah, so one of the episodes is the top 10 epic songs of 1973. And I believe we kick off with uh, Reeling in the Years is number 10. If you feel like sulking away in old times, then this song is for you. This song is about a guy recalling a breakup. Pretty sure he's not over it yet. Are you reeling in the years? Had a really great chorus to it. Are you reeling in the years? 
throwing away the time. So often when you watch these episodes, number 10 rolls out of the gate and you go, well, if this is number 10, what is number one? Because right. this song's amazing. Right. And every category has that um, possibility and that wow factor. But the greatest part about that song was the guitar player. Da 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 Reeling in the years went to number 11 in 1973 on the Pop Singles Chart. And today, it goes to number 10 on our list. I look at the bands from that, let's see. Started off with that and then Rambling Man, Alban Brothers, Goodbye Yellow Brick yes. Road. Uh, Eagles are in with The Who, Aerosmith, young band. Right, and so, so often Alice you think Cooper, of these bands and the you Who. think, you know, Aerosmith, yeah. for instance, I mean, boy, not only do they span the 70s, you know, but, but they're going into the 80s with these hits. And right. it just shows how important those musicians were of that time because they created great music that withstood the stand of time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm so excited when I watch yeah. the show because I, I keep going, oh, I can't turn it off. I can't turn no, it off. No, it's it addictive. Off. It is yeah. addictive. Yeah. Um, and, and our editors do say that they basically spend their paycheck going on iTunes and then downloading these playlists because they are such catchy tunes and they go home and they want to continue to listen to them even more after our editing sessions. Well, they should be thanking you, not bringing it up <laughs> know, like exactly. I'm having to spill my salary. Yeah. It should be a thank you. You're welcome. I like your thinking. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. The other ones coming up, I think, uh, and, and they're cleverly written too, but sure. best sports. So sports arena jams. These are those classic rock tunes that you hear when you're sitting in the stadium watching a basketball game or a hockey game. Uh, we've got uh, one hit wonders. This, that's one, I think that's the most educational episode we have this, this run. Today, we're counting down the best of the best of one hit wonders. As always, we asked you to help choose our winners, so thanks for logging on and casting your vote. For this one hit wonder list, we could have sang about magic. Oh, ho, ho, it's magic. And we could have counted balloons. But we paid attention to your top votes. How long has this been going on? How long has this been going on? And I love it because the song, spoiler alert, is everyone <laughs> always identified that it was this breakup song and like, oh, cheating. There was cheating, but it wasn't a boy and a girl and a bad breakup. It was one of the band members was moonlighting and cheating on the band. So That's the band great. found out about it, and they were like, dude, how long has this been going on? You've been, like, stepping out with this other band. And so I love But they got a hit out of it. They did get a hit out of one it. Hit. One hit. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, what are some of the other ones? I think uh, High note hitters. We have high, high note, note hitters. Yep. So these are those uh, singers that you really um, are amazed by. That The song comes on the radio or it gets stuck in your head and you're in your shower and you try to sing the high part and you're like, oh, thank God I'm alone in the car right now <laughs> <laughs> because these notes are just impossible to reach. And, you know, how fantastic that these artists were able to do that and sustain their careers even now singing these high notes. You know, Getty Lee and uh, Steve Perry and, you know, Michael Jackson's on the list. Sorry. I'm giving it all away. Tune in! Yeah, but the people who hit them, you really are impressed, so and impressed. you wish you could be them in some ways, and most times you're not. No, yeah, well, and that's what's great is we have these um, experts and artists come in and talk about the song. So it's not just my opinion. It's not me mm -hmm. telling you that these songs are fantastic. You know, it's Eddie Money coming in, it's Lita Ford, it's it's Ricky Rocket from Poison, it's Dee Snider from Twisted Sister, and even Dee Snider was saying um, how the the stress that high notes puts on your voice and how hard it is and yet these artists these 10 that we've selected make it seem so effortless you mentioned earlier that your parents played do you remember the first song or one of the early pieces of music you heard that your parents were playing that stuck with you okay two tracks and it's so funny because both of these songs have made it into this season but it wasn't on purpose uh the rolling stones miss you <laughs> yeah. Um, you hit the high notes very know, well right? there. Yeah. Um, that song, I just remember growing up and hearing that album. And uh, then there was the eight track, the Donna Summers eight track um, that was always in our van, our family van on road trips. Really? Yeah. Including Love to Love You Baby? <laughs> love to Love You Baby. See, that was another one where I heard that story back then of what was happening during the song. Mm -hmm. And There's a sto story or an ur urban legend that there was some... Um, uh, 
sexual acts going on in the recording studio that Donna Summer was maybe pleasuring herself to get those oohs and ahs and groans in Love to Love You Baby. But it has since been said that no, she only was, you know, pretending and, you know, wasn't really doing anything to get to those oohs and ahs, but that the producer, I believe it was, did dim the lights and say, if you want to lay down on the floor, you can. In 1975, Donna Summer would find her first radio hit with this steamy tune. I know, man, she's moaning. Sounds like she's having sex. It's as if they put a microphone in bed with her. She was basically acting very orgasmic in the recording session, and that was a real turn on for a lot of guys. And it was right when I was like starting to become a songwriter, and I thought, oh, all you have to do is moan and groan. I'm in. Access is known for music. Music is back. It's back on Access TV in a big way. Oh, yeah. If you can just talk about why Access is the place for the best music. I mean, truly, I, I feel like in this day and age, we are oversaturated with content. And it's always big dramas. I feel like all the television shows that are out right now are so heavy. And you have to really pay attention, too, because the storylines are going every which way. And what's great about Access TV is it's going after your heart which is music and rock and roll and that beat that we love and those memories that come along with these classic rock bands. So when you flip on the channel, whether you know what you're tuning into or if you're just browsing, something's going to come on. It's gonna be a concert or a rock documentary or my show with the top 10 revealed and a tune is gonna catch you and it's gonna bring you down memory lane and it's just gonna, you know, it, it takes some of the stress out of your day, I think. You know, you're not following a storyline or a plot that's really stressing you out. You're able to forget about work for a moment and you're able to listen to things that you love, which is like Fleetwood Mac or Paul Simon or, or even I think we have stuff with the Backstreet Boys right now. Just which, saying. <laughs> could be in the top 10. <laughs> but that's the thing you're, you were talking about earlier when we were uh, putting on makeup together in the makeup room. We were. That uh, you, this is your work, but it's such pleasurable work that mm -hmm. sometimes you're at home and you go, oh, I'm going to look at my work, but all of a sudden I'm sucked Oh, yeah. It. I got so, so, so Access TV had a marathon. It was an all-day back-to-back stack on Saturday of the Top Ten Revealed. Um, it was our first six episodes, and they played it not once, not twice, but three times back-to-back. -back. And so I decided, well, I'm going to flip on the TV, you know, bump up the ratings. And I just figured, <laughs> well, I'd have it on in the background. And I caught myself multiple times throughout the day sitting down and watching an episode because, oh, this one was funny, or he's about to say that line that was so interesting, or wait, what was number four? And I got sucked into my own show that I not only host, but I produce. So you have to imagine, I have watched these things a ton. So, I mean, it says something that I'm still interested in it after seeing each episode like 30 times. Very good. All right, if you can think of, if you could look in the camera and think oh. of 10 reasons why Dish customers should watch your show. <laughs> See if you can get to 10. 10 reasons. Uh, you get this smile, you get this hair, all right? So that's two. Um, it's tunes that take you down memory lane. It'll give you water cooler chit chat. Uh, it's better than uh, doing drugs on the street. And uh, my boss likes the ratings, so keep up the good work. My mom loves that I have any fans out there, except for the creepy ones, you know who you are. And let's see, uh, pays my bills, that's always great. Uh, I like to get fan emails telling me that I got the list right or I got the list wrong. And number 10 reason, because this guy's telling you to. New episodes of the Top 10 Revealed Sunday nights on Access TV. That's channel 167 on DISH. Also on Sunday nights, Trunk Fest, where music historian Eddie Trunk gives you a front row seat to some of the country's most iconic music and cultural festivals. It's a great lineup Sunday nights on Access TV. And if you love music programming and your HD DVR is connected to the internet, you can check out the Access Concerts and Music Series on demand. And if you're on the go, you can always check out Access TV on your mobile device with Dish Anywhere. My thanks to Katie, Daryl, and everyone at Access TV. Don't miss the top 10 revealed Sunday nights on channel 167. In the Dish Studio, I'm Scott Patrick.